Ethereum 2.0 is rolling out this year, and it's going to be the most disruptive upgrade the blockchain sector has ever witnessed. Ethereum will become a deflationary asset, accelerating its digital scarcity. While at the same time, the unlock of $30 billion worth of state thief is likely to make markets highly volatile. The second technical update will increase capacity on the network and enable the protocol to scale through sharding and layer twos to become the foundational layer of decentralized finance. This video explores the roadmap and implications of these upgrades as Ethereum migrates to version 2. Good morning, my name is James Buccini and on this channel I explore new and emerging technologies in the blockchain sector. I'm not a financial advisor, this is not financial advice. The migration to Ethereum 2.0 isn't going to happen overnight. There's going to be a series of upgrades over the next year to roll this out. The first major one is in Q2 this year, probably around May-June time. It's being called the Merge. This is when Ethereum is going to migrate from a proof of work consensus algorithm to a proof of stake consensus algorithm. There's going to be a lot of economic updates which I'm going to go through in a second. The second major update is going to be around a year's time, so probably around the end of 2022 or early 2023, and that's being called the Surge. This is when we're going to see a lot of improvements to the capacity and throughput on the Ethereum network, and hopefully some reduced gas fees. There's three other updates planned as well, which I've bundled into one, so I think that's likely to change by the time we start to think seriously about implementing them. So let's first look at the merge and see how the economics affect ETH as a digital asset. Ethereum blocks are currently validated by a proof of work consensus algorithm. This is similar to what Bitcoin uses and it's generally done in massive kind of server facilities with racks and racks of ASIC miners and they're all running a hashing program to try and find a matching hash for that block to get the block rewards. In contrast to this, a proof of stake algorithm works by a user depositing funds to a node. A node is just like a computer on a network. They'll then stake them funds to validate blocks. So if the block is invalid and there's a bad actor in play, the user will have their stake funds slashed. This protects the network and it means that the people that are investors in the network and hold a native token, which in this case is Ethereum, are responsible for validating and securing a network. Moving from proof of work to proof of stake means that the electrical consumption of the network is going to fall drastically. It's likely to be less than 1% of the current usage. While all this is going on, the block rewards are going to drop 90%. That means that the annual inflation of Ethereum, which is currently 4.3%, is going to drop to 0.43%. If you remember earlier in the year, we had the EIP1559 update, which meant that gas fees get sent to a burn address. That actually means that Ethereum is going to become a deflationary asset. Over time, the amount of fees that are burnt is going to be greater than the amount of new tokens which are distributed to stakers. The other factor that comes into play here is that stakers are more likely to reinvest their holdings. They're long-term holders of the native token anyway, and they don't have any electrical bills to pay. However, it's not all roses from a tokenomic point of view. The Beacon Chain currently has 9 billion ETH locked up, which has a market value of 30 billion US dollars. Shortly after the merge, this is all going to get unlocked. And some of this was staked at a value of around 1,000 ETH. So people are sitting on a lot of unrealized gains. It's likely that a proportion of that is going to find its way to exchange as people cash out profits. So there's going to be an increase in supply. The combination of a short-term supply shock with improving long-term fundamentals are going to make it a very interesting period for Ethereum holders. I think a lot of it depends on what the market conditions are like around the time. If we're in the middle of a bear market, then that increased supply could really devastate and we could see a kind of a wick into a capitulation event. Whereas if the markets are booming and there's a lot of institutional investors starting to hear about ETH, maybe we might kind of get to a stage where we're starting to talk about the flipping in and Ethereum is becoming a household name. And it's not unthinkable to see people like Michael Saylor or hedge funds or even sovereign wealth funds start to take a look at ETH as a digital asset that they might want to take a long term holding in because of this staking revenue. It's perhaps more understandable for traditional finance firms because it's a revenue generating asset. The staking rewards can be looked at as a yield, which isn't available in other traditional finance markets right now. The next stage of the rollout to Ethereum 2.0 is going to be called the surge. This is all about increasing the capacity of the Ethereum network and increasing the throughput of transactions. Ethereum founder Vitalik Buterin suggested that this will happen about six months after the merge. So we're probably looking at towards the end of 2022 or early 2023. The biggest improvement here is the implementation of data sharding. And what that means is that instead of having just one big blockchain, we're going to chop that up into 64 smaller pieces. That'll make it more manageable and more efficient for the nodes to process. A lot of the focus of the surge update is on layer two efficiencies. I think that our days of swapping tokens and minting NFTs on layer one mainnet are probably numbered. 
In the future, we're more likely to be doing all of these things on layer twos, which then send a proof or verification back to the layer one. Ethereum mainnet will essentially become a chain of proofs. Some initial early estimates have suggested that the transactional cost on these layer twos could get as low as 0.01 of dollars per transaction, and that the Ethereum network via layer twos could handle a total of 100,000 transactions per second, which is massive. They're clearly building this not as a plaster to patch up the kind of escalating gas fees in the short term, but as a foundational layer for DeFi for the next 20, 30 years. The rest of the updates are planned for 2023 and beyond, and these come into a number of brackets. And they're all going to be kind of incremental updates rather than massive breaking changes to the network. The first thing which I'm quite excited about is the possibility of stateless clients. What this means is that you don't need to download the entire blockchain to run a node. You can essentially run a node with minimal amount of hardware, so much so that it's even been suggested that you could have a digital wallet on your mobile phone, and that connects directly to the Ethereum network, rather than going through an RPC provider like Infura. Another thing that's been mentioned that's going to happen at some point, but there's no kind of immediate plans to roll out, is some kind of archive functionality for past historical data. Anything that they don't need imminently doesn't need to be stored, so it could be either compressed or archived or some kind of functionality like that to move it off chain. It's also been suggested that we're going to see some EVM updates pushed out. These are going to be mainly focused on low level data structures and big in arithmetic functionality. The other thing that's going to be looked at once this is all live is making the block production more robust and more anti fragile. And that's going to be via a process called Proposer Builder Separation. The conclusion to all of this is that it's going to be a very big year for Ethereum, especially if we get up to kind of flipping in levels and a run up to the merge. That would take a roughly a doubling of the price in Ethereum relative to Bitcoin, which is by no means an easy feat or guaranteed, but it's not unthinkable either. If that happens, then Ethereum will become the largest cryptocurrency by market cap which will make it a household name and probably attract a lot of institutional investment as well. The other side of this is that $30 billion worth of Ethereum is going to get unlocked after the merge. And that's going to be a massive supply shock. And there could be short sellers aggressively selling into the market prior to that to front run the trade. Short term, the markets are likely to be highly volatile. And it's going to be a lot of opportunities and risks for traders. However, over the long term, I think what Ethereum are building is really capable of taking DeFi to the next level and open it up to almost mass adoption of this technology. The economic improvements from the merge are going to make Ethereum a deflationary asset and over a long enough time period that can only add to its digital scarcity. I hope that you found this video informative. Please hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. If you're interested in DeFi then consider subscribing to the channel and thank you for watching to the end.